kick off on his way. with Gary and Rory is a rugby union star who was an all-black at the age of 19, which is something that even Michael Jackson can't claim. <laughs> <laughs> with David and Jonathan is a stand-up comedian from Montana who says he's still mystified by the rules of football, which could be a problem as he's just been appointed coach of Middlesbrough. <laughs> which all? <laughs> We start the show with Sporting Bluff, where the teams decide who on the other side is speaking the truth and who is about as trustworthy as the England defence facing Jonah Lomu. David, Jonathan and Rich, your question is all about Jonah here. And he sees off Guscott. Healy through, he's gone through Healy as well. And the big man's done it again. So, what do you have to tell us, Gary's team? I turned down an invitation to one of Madonna's dinner parties. Jonah Lomu turned down a role as a James Bond villain. Jonah Lomu turned down a chance to sing with Kiri Takanawa. <laughs> Nick, can I say I'm feeling a little bit depressed this evening? Really? Because I came tonight, I made the extra effort for the lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every night, were we, but... <laughs> Picked out the suit carefully, I put in the aftershave. I was looking forward to meeting Gina Lumley. Some big fat bloke turned up. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Next time, send me a photograph, will you? <laughs> be, True, fair, Jonathan, be fair, Jonathan, he is growing a fanny on his head. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's obvious that he went to a midget barber. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rash of strange hairstyles turning out now, isn't there? It's extraordinary. Yeah. I've been not impugning us, David. Well, there's nothing wrong with Laura Ashley. <laughs> well, there is. She's dead. <laughs> Aluminium oh. pan scarer, you're worried about, isn't it? Dual purpose. <laughs> I don't think he would turn down a dinner with Madonna. Joe and I, I don't know if that's the answer, but if you do go to Madonna's house, and she's got a lovely place with Shane Richie, I tell you, it's a beautiful house they've got there. If you do go there... Shane Richie. Guy Richie. If you go there, you want to watch out, a word of warning, don't try the homemade cakes. And I'll tell you for why. She ices them herself, lady milk. <laughs> that's not a bra she's wearing, that's an icing falser, that was. <laughs> she can do the initials. <laughs> Would you turn it down? Don't. I know you'll have to tell me you might be the expert in that area, eh? What about, what about a dinner You seem invite? to have tried her cake that she was going on no, about. No, yeah, too. I'd love a bit of milky cake, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, did you check out where the cherry was, either? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Madonna, uh, they've got a baby now together, haven't they? got a baby called Rocco. And her first <laughs> child was called Lourdes. Lourdes. So named, I believe, because the baby emerged from a spot which had been visited annually by millions. <laughs> I think Madonna probably, she married a guy named Guy because she's, uh, she screwed so many guys that it was just better to marry a guy named Guy than Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what was well, the other one? It was well, Bond villain. Yeah. Film. That's sort of my territory, film 2001. You'd want to have seen me do film 2001, Gary, because it's up against the porn on Channel 5. But, it's, <laughs> but really, I suppose you would make a good Bond villain. What? No job. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think Gary would make a good bond. And he could go against his arch villain, the man with the golden wonder. <laughs> we'll try the bond then, by so process of elimination. Think that Gary was telling the truth, let's see. Yes, Gary did indeed speak the truth. Jonah Lomu turned down the role of bullion in The World Is Not Enough, which was instead taken up by Goldie. Jonah's greatest passion outside rugby is cars, although sadly two years ago he wrote off a Range Rover. It ran into him while he was crossing the street. 
The New Zealand All Blacks are best known for their warlike hacker, or as Gary calls it, that stupid girly dance. <laughs> Jonah here has been dubbed the fastest thing in team sport, apart, obviously, from Dwight York taking off his trousers. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Jonah, it's the strange but interesting Paolo Di Canio for you. Fine running by the Italian through the heart of the Bradford defence and no penalty given by the referee. Di Canio is always ferreting away, trying to find an opening. He might be able to find one here and again he's denied for the third time today. Now the West Ham striker believes that in order to get penalties, he will have to do what, David's team? Paolo Di Canio believes that he will need to blackmail the referee in order to get a penalty. Paolo Di Canio believes he'll have to sell his soul to the devil in order to get a penalty. Paolo Di Canio believes he will need to play in disguise in order to get a penalty. Uh, let's establish first. Um, do you know anything about football? No, not you, Gary. I'm just talking to... <laughs> <laughs> You got, you got loads of penalties, didn't you, Gary? Mm. How did you do that? By diving, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I, I never dived. You what don't did, need to dive. What did you do then? goalkeepers are fairly stupid. Goalkeepers are fairly stupid, if you're watching. <laughs> Who's on next week? <laughs> <laughs> you knock it past them, and then you sort of make sure your feet don't lift off the ground too much, and they stupidly go, oh. And that's enough to knock you over, And they you bring go. you down, yeah. Whereas this man is attacked by seven 20-stone people and still manages to stay on his feet, Gary. <laughs> How do you blackmail the referee? Um, being kidnapped, Gary. Oh, I mean, you couldn't be kidnapped, could you? Because they say, oh, cut one of his ears off and send it. I know we can't afford the postage and packing. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other one? Selling your soul to the devil. Well, it's either dead or crisps. <laughs> you choose, Jim. Unless you want. If you get it wrong, we'll smack your head in. Disguise? Yeah, I'll definitely go with disguise. OK, you think that Jonathan was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> so, for once, Jonathan wasn't exaggerating. Paolo Di Canio actually reckons his only chance of getting a penalty is to disguise himself by having plastic surgery so refs don't know it's him. Someone give Jordan a penalty, for goodness sake, the girl's about to explode. <laughs> Paolo Di Canio is said to get a penalty at Old Trafford. Jap Stam needs to take out a machine gun and riddle you full of bullets. <laughs> Although, with any luck, Gary Neville might be caught in the crossfire. <laughs> and at the end yeah, of that round, great. Gary's team have three points and David's team have I'll three points. <laughs> We on this show have been known to criticise David Beckham frivolously in the past, but this week I feel there is a serious point to be made. After several children across the country have been turned away from school for turning up with a Mohican haircut. I think we have to ask what sort of example is it for a man who's captain England of football to get their hair done like that? What kind of a man would do such a thing? <laughs> it's just irresponsible. <laughs> But Gary, that's not like a Mohican. You've gone in there like a Brazilian waxing on you, haven't you? That's what the ladies have for their bikinis these days. And by the way, ladies, I think I speak on behalf of all the team here when I'm saying, stop that madness now. We like you au naturel. It doesn't matter if it looks like you've got half a pound of old Holborn hanging out of either side of the That's the way nature intended you to be. That's the way you should be. Keep it real, sisters. Keep it real. <laughs> What's going on now is what's going on, around in which, etc., etc. David's team, take a look at this. Hey, Pete, come over here. I got some slop for you. I think what it is is my calling is is getting him into a state of ecstasy. Don't be afraid of him. Don't, don't come to you. So, what was that all about? I think I can handle this one. <laughs> Could be like an Arkansas singles meeting. <laughs> this is uh, this is actually a, a sport in America where they uh, they get pigs all worked up right. and very excited, and then they're um, the more excited they are, the uh, 
the harder their skin gets and they're very bounceable and uh and they slam them down and see how high they'll bounce and, uh, they land in a big tub of ointment right it's, it's a fairly new sport It might be a way to call, uh, you know, the, with the foot and mouth disease, maybe humans are actually marrying pigs because then you can't kill them if they're legally married. <laughs> the male pig has a corkscrew shaped willy. Do you know this? Any pig, fa uh, pig farmers in there? <laughs> so they've got, so if you've got a left hand thread, you've got to find a female pig with a, a left handed thread fanny. <laughs> Otherwise, when you go in, they spin that way, you go out, they go that way. <laughs> If the penis is like a corkscrew, presumably that's like a one-stop night out for you because you've got a date, you can open the wine, and then you can eat them afterwards. <laughs> well, you can't beat a bit of crackling, I would say. <laughs> you know, apparently, and don't ask me how I know this, but apparently the pig's orgasm lasts for 30 minutes, Then it was while attempting to provide a voiceover for that scene that finished poor old Johnny Morris off. <laughs> is, it, well, is this the ancient art of... Pig calling or pig three points? I'll give you that. Yes, well yeah. done. Yeah. Uh, uh, tough, isn't it? Well yes, that was a noble well sport of hog calling all the way from Pomona, California, in which contestants have to entice pigs towards them using only their voices. Pig calling is now so popular in the southern states that last month there was a celebrity event. The winner, Vanessa Feltz, came to her caller <laughs> in just five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> The champion pig is always taken home after the event in a chauffeur-driven limousine, and it returns for the following year's event in the comfort of its own BAP. <laughs> Gary's team, this one's especially for Jonah. So, what do we think was happening there? Mm. Was it Jonah's foot bath and had all fallen in? <laughs> No, Gary, it wasn't that. <laughs> but Jonah's got very big feet, that's what you need to know. Can so you see your feet, uh, Jonah? Do you want to show us your feet? Hold on. <laughs> so, Gary, you can do a Jonah's foot bath joke put, again. Put your foot down. <laughs> Was it Jonah's foot bath and they'd all fallen in? <laughs> Good gag. <laughs> no, Gary. Oh. <laughs> So this is especially for jo Jonas. So it's, is it, are we talking underwater rugby, this? Mm, yeah, so, basically. So it, was... no, it can't be rugby. I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> it was founded at uh, rugby school when they were playing underwater football and somebody picked the ball up and swam with it. <laughs> <laughs> it actually reminded me of one of the baths that we used to go in after matches, but there were no floaters, so it couldn't have been. Who did floaters? Come on, Gary. Who did floaters at top? I'll just get a clue. Darren Anderson? He's got a new nickname, apparently, Darren Anderson. It's Tampon. <laughs> One week in, three weeks out. <laughs> well, I think we're... Are, you, are, we, are you happy with underwater yeah, yeah, rugby? Yeah, underwater rugby. I'll give you three oh, points for that. Yeah. Yes, that was the sport of underwater rugby, which is all the rage in Germany and Scandinavia and almost nowhere else. <laughs> it's the first time a major sport has been played completely underwater, apart from county cricket in April. <laughs> the hardest player in the league, Adrian Schmidt, was sent off three times last season, once for bombing and twice for heavy petting. <laughs> The advantage of the sport for rugby players is that they can see their farts immediately. <laughs> the downside is there's absolutely no chance of lighting them. <laughs> there is also, bizarrely, an underwater rugby team in Colombia, although the sport there has been tainted by allegations of drug taking, after the scrum half jumped into the pool and dissolved like an aspirin. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Now for author, author, where we read out a pair of sporting quotes and ask from whose lips they originally sprang. David's team, listen to this. It is like sleeping with the prettiest girl in the country once every other month, when I enjoy the experience of sleeping every night 
with a nice Liverpool girl, who might not be Miss Great Britain. Do you mind if I well, defer for a second? Because there's something I want to clear the air about with David, if that's right, Nick. Mm. Sorry. David, I was reading The Sun the other day, and uh, I mean, saw you have a column in The you'd Sun. You'd have been reading a top columnist, wouldn't you? You've got a column in The Sun yeah. where they describe <laughs> you as the most respected man in cricket. So how much <laughs> grief do all the other blokes have to get for you to be the most respected <laughs> bloke in cricket? That's what I want to work out. But you were talking about the current scandal in cricket, I noticed, yeah. and you were saying how there's been fixing going on, there's been blackmailing, there's even been Just a bit threats of, of murder fixing. and so on and so forth. If, if all this was going on in cricket, all this exciting stuff, why do they show the ball in matches? <laughs> <laughs> do you watch it? Do you actually watch it? Oh, words of it. So why don't you do that when you're actually playing? Get someone else out who's a bit better than you. <laughs> I'm wondering why we do this show. Same reason as I write that Every song. Every week we get money. slaughtered. <laughs> You enjoy it though, don't you really? You enjoy it? No. Don't you enjoy it at all? You upset me every week. You're talking about shagging my wife and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. want you exactly. to be the last to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never ever breathe a word about when I slip round to Mrs. R. I know. Mrs. W, we call her. I know because she's. <laughs> It's not slipping around, it's slipping out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Ronnie Biggs was out. Little <laughs> 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 player? Fowler, Owen? Manager? Yeah. Nagy? Gerard Ullier or something like oh, that. Very nice. Nice. Three oh. points. Mm. Very nice. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was Liverpool manager Gerard Houllier who was explaining in his own way why he doesn't want to become an international manager. Gerard Houllier was originally a teacher in a Liverpool comprehensive and encouraged many of his delinquent Scouse pupils to write poetry. Sadly, they kept tampering with the meter. Houllier was so successful at his first club. Houllier <laughs> was so successful at his first club, Noël Les Miennes. That's rubbish. Houllier <laughs> was so successful at his first club, Noël Les Mines. That's, That's better. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, I need a kiss. Houllier was well, so I successful... Like, I like the meter joke. I, the meter. <laughs> I like the meter joke. I thought the meter joke we'll was keep great. It for you. Yeah. We'll keep it in for you. Great. Very good. Houllier was so successful... we're right with you this time. <laughs> He knows I need a piss. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Houllier was so successful at his first... <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team, open your cavernous ears to this. Someone came up to me and said he actually preferred the old atmosphere at the stadium. I said, not only do you look like a Pratt, you are a Pratt. If you really think the atmosphere was better then, come to me after the next game and I'll get two security guards to rough you up and piss in your pockets. So, Gary's team, who was that and what was he talking about? It was a John Prescott on his uh, new campaign. <laughs> so, carry on. Why don't you ask him, Jen, now ask him to his face what you asked me earlier about him. Uh, Is he part gypsy, you said, didn't you? <laughs> It's talking about stadiums, so it's going to be someone like. Yeah. Is it something to do with the Wembley thing? It's Ken Bates. It's correct. Three yeah. points. Well done. <laughs> yes, indeed. It was Chelsea chairman Ken Bates talking about the supposed improvements at Stamford Bridge. Although, to be fair, the creation of the new upper tier at Chelsea will guarantee fans the best view of Premiership football in London next season. It's up so high, you can see right down into the Fulham ground. <laughs> According to former Chelsea striker Pierluigi Casiraghi, Ken Bates doesn't know the meaning of the word gratitude. Well, that's nothing. Claudio Ranieri doesn't know the meaning of the word hat. <laughs> At the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. <laughs> Time now for our regulars to stagger about in the dark as we play Field the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're first this week. I'd like to take your positions. Blindfold's with you. You have 90 seconds to work out who you're fundling. Hopefully not each other. <laughs> 
I hope it's the pig for you. <laughs> oh, it's not, is it? Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, you can begin your gripping what? now. Oh, oh, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, why you? Oh, oh, hello. Oh, dear. Is that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got hold of a helmet here. Yeah? <laughs> That's blimey. There's a, man, there's a man buried up to his neck in the studio. <laughs> This is, um, which women wear lots of padding? Oh, it's Jeffrey Boycott's girlfriend. <laughs> and oh, hello. Brought the level and their relationship to uh, each other. Ice hockey, isn't it? <laughs> right, ice hockey. Is that um, you, Posh? Their relationship... <laughs> England players? Mm. British players? Yeah. British players? That'll do. Sex. Well done. Definitely. That's not an offer. Uh, <laughs> are they are they sisters? Are they twins or something? They are indeed. Michelle and Cheryl Smith. <laughs> they get some high hockey players. Fancied a puck, didn't you? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it back to them. <laughs> okay, Jonathan and David. <laughs> Rory! Oh, hello. <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest, please? to hold back. OK. <laughs> and your time starts now. No, it's a, oh, hold on, it's a boxing glove. <laughs> I'm warning you. It's a, John Prescott. Hey, what's going on down there? <laughs> There's a dog in here or something. <laughs> ah. <laughs> that... well, well, hold on. Whoa. She's waxed. <laughs> <laughs> She's smooth. She's what got no it? shoes on. You sure? Go on, what smack him. Yeah, she's boxing gloves. Oh, she's got go. a belt on. Well, it's a champion. She's, she's a world a champion. Very good. Boxing lady of yeah. the yeah. belt variety. <laughs> getting Kong there. Kong Fui. You getting there? <laughs> she's a, a kickboxer. Barefoot Tie. kickboxer. Tie boxer, Tie. correct. Well done, three points. Gussie Lowe. Gussie Lowe. The world champion tie boxer. Well done, Gussie. And so, at the end of that round, David's team have 12 points and Gary's team have 12 points. <laughs> the prize matters with the name game. The leaders goes first, which is neither team. So, David, your team has the honour alphabetically. Could you pass those along to Jonathan, please? 90 seconds to get as many names as you can, starting now. OK, uh, he's, uh, he's a greedy, overpaid Spurs player. Gary. <laughs> Obviously a good answer, not the one I'm looking for. Um, his surname's the same as uh, Donald, the bloke who's the diving. The, yeah, Sol okay. Campbell, there you go. OK, uh, this one, he pushes refs over. He plays for West Ham. We had him on earlier. Paladin County. That's the one. Um, oh, OK, uh, there's a character, you do a comedy character called Otis Lee... Crenshaw. Crenshaw, and the first name, Michael Jackson saying... Ben. Yeah, the two of us, that's it, yeah. <laughs> All right, the second one. This one, for that. I can't the first name, when you find people who are not a bit doolally, but they've got one very strong talent, like, like Gary, for example, who's very good with money. OK, one person... <laughs> there, they're not that bright. Like Dustin Hoffman in Wayne Man. OK, they're Autism, an idiot, Autism. an idiot... Savant. Savant, and the second name... Savant. Old bloke, beady old bloke, with long, wispy old hair, who goes up to young girls and goes, come back to my place. <laughs> Car, if you let me touch your pull nanny. He's, like, he's, like, he's a horrible old bloke. He's like a Dickens yeah. character. Yeah. He runs a nightclub and yeah. lap dancing bars. Yeah. Come Spring back in there. See All right. This first one. Okay, this whole guy is a footballer, but coincidentally, lead singer of Guns N' Roses. Lead singer of Guns N' Roses. 
please. Axel. Axel? Rose. Yeah, he's a footballer oh. as well. Who would have thought that? OK. <laughs> this guy here, it's like a character that um, Kenny Everett would have done as a punk. His second <laughs> name is, when you are out with your manservant and he expectorates, you say, please do not leave that on the path. What is it called, sir? Spit. The spittle, correct. And the first name... <laughs> Right. First name is a very dull snooker player. We have one when you're off sunning Steve, yourself. Steve Spittle, that's David. it, Steve Spittle. <laughs> oh, blimey. Okay. Uh, the second name is. Um... Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Well done. 18, well done. Okay, seven. We'll win it for you. Jonah, could you please pass those along to Rory? And your time starts oh, now. Oh, a new Man City manager. Well, will be for a few weeks anyway. Kevin Keegan. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a, an England British Lions uh, rugby union winger. His second name is a German gun. Dan Luger. Whoa. Yes. Oh, Dan Jonah. First name same as Redknapp, the manager. Harry. Okay. And um, second name silly as a brush. Basil brush. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cartoon character, Basil. something the menace. Dennis. And uh, it's a slang word for love bite. Hickey. Oh. Hickey. <laughs> O'Neill, Leicester manager, had this Christian name. I wish he was. Martin. And his <laughs> second name sounds a bit like you. Someone who is always whinging and... Whinging and... <laughs> Moaning. Moaning. So you're a bit of a... Moaner. Moaner, very good. I never moan. How can you sound a moaner? Golfer, never, a golfer. A golfer. A golfer, second name. If you were sort of going down on someone, they said... <laughs> With the tongue. <laughs> Not so heavy with the tongue. What are you gonna lay up? What? Lay up. N well, not quite, Jim. Not quite, I think. <laughs> but you could do it not so heavily. Yeah. Lighter. Lighter. Uh, I'll make Frank make lighter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A, Tong a Tongan rugby union player. It's the first name is a, a classic epic film with Charlton Heston going around in chariots. Ben Hur. Yeah, and second name, you must know a Tongan rugby union player whose first name is Ben Hur. Please, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> Kivalo. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Next one. Um, if you uh, if you inflict pain on someone, you hurt them. Hurt them. So you are a punisher. No. The <laughs> clicker. Herta. Herta. Murray Spooter. Murray Spooter, well done. Yep. Your sons call this. Which one? Which <laughs> one? <laughs> well, only just David's team had 18, but this week's winners is yeah. Gary's team with 19. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Rich, we're all off to piss in Ken Bates' pockets. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over. It is now. Paul Merton welcomes two giants of comedy to Room 101 tomorrow night on UKG2. Stephen Fry and Johnny Vegas join him. And Johnny pops up in the next show this evening too. And that's your second helping of They Think It's All Over after this. <laughs> <laughs>